Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. In dire need, the country is facing a critical blood shortage, and today, Local 4 is teaming up with the American Red Cross and Gardner White to help. And that tops our noon on your Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Jason Colthorpe. From heat waves that we, we've had, a hurricane and summer travel, the national blood supply has been hit very hard, leaving it down more than 25% since just July 1st. Now, the Red Cross is urging people to give blood and Local 4 teaming up, as we say, with Gardner White and the Red Cross to do just that for several communities. Yeah, we got blood drives happening all over the place. Let's get out live to Taylor, where Dr. Frank McGeorge is. And I see somebody with her arm raised right behind you there, Doc. That is absolutely right, Jason. And Priya, you know, first off, I actually want to thank Gardner White for their decades-long commitment to securing our blood supply in Metro Detroit and generously allowing us to use their retail space for Red Cross blood drives. Now, I'm joined by two special people right now. Um, in particular, first, Dean Piggott. He's donating blood right now. He is a retired Wayne County Sheriff. And Dean, tell us how long you've been donating and how much blood you've given. Uh, probably about 20 years or better and they say I've donated at least three gallons so far. Wow, okay, so and you get calls pretty regularly and why is that? I have the rare blood type that uh, a lot of people can, my platelets can be used for, so they do call me quite regularly. And do you find um, the locations are easy to get to, Gardner White in particular? Yes, very easy. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for all of your help, Dean. I really appreciate it. So, you know, now I'm joined here by Jamila Wilson. She's with the American Red Cross. And Jamila, I want you to talk about the urgency right now for blood donations. Well, right now it's urgent because the nation is experiencing a national blood shortage. Uh, the summer months are always a challenge. Uh, peak vacation season, and now we're faced with um, weather, the heat waves. Uh, we're at the peak hurricane season, Hurricane Debbie. So it just makes for a very difficult time for donors to come out and collect the blood that we need for the hospitals. Well, and of course, there's no substitute for blood, so we really do need this kind of supply on a constant basis. Um, tell me something as far as um, type blood types. Are there any specific needs right now? Well, we need all blood types. Uh, o, POS, O, NAG, we use a lot in the, uh, emergency situations, but we need all blood types. So um, come out if you're at least 17 years old. 16-year-olds can actually donate with parental consent. Uh, weigh a minimum of 110 pounds and be in general good health. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. So, you know, I really want to say thanks again to Dean and Jamila for joining us out here, giving so much information and sharing your story. And of course, you know, the need for blood is constant. And so come on out to a Gardner White store and roll up your sleeve and help save as many as three lives. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge reporting live from Gardner White in Taylor. Back to you guys. Yeah, keep up the good work yeah. out there, Doc. Of course, we'll check back in with you on later editions of the newscasts. Uh, and a reminder, you can donate, as Doc said, all the way till 445 today at Gardner White Stores in Ann Arbor, in Novi, Saginaw, and Taylor, where you can also say hi to the Doc. Check out his wonderful bedside manner. He actually has a pretty good sense of humor. If you can't make it today, you can go to Gardner White Stores in Auburn Hills, Canton, Howell, Shelby Township, Warren, and Waterford on Thursday for another blood drive. You can find all the details and where to register at clickondetroit.com. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson announcing she's the latest victim of a swatting attack. Swatting involves making a false emergency report to authorities, leading them often with a SWAT team to respond to an innocent person's home. Benson posting on X yesterday her home was targeted twice in the past two days, and it makes her the third notable Michigan politician to be swatted this month. Priya? Fire investigators will be looking for what started an electrical fire inside a senior living apartment that's left one person dead. Two others suffered smoke inhalation from the fire at Camper Stevens Apartments in downtown Detroit. Let's get out to Sean Lay this afternoon. And Sean, many residents there say it was just difficult to get out of the building. Well, absolutely, because you're talking about going down a lot of stairs. Let me just lay the land, lay it out for you here. Lots of residents here we're talking to. Here's Linda. She's up on the 14th floor, all the way up there. 
Her unit started filling up with smoke after she heard a loud bang. She stayed in her apartment. A firefighter eventually got her and her dog, Bella, out right there. But other people here are out there waiting to go back in. They can go back in. This, right now, this building has not been shut down by any means. We're asking the city if it's a safe building at this point. But here's what we know. Let me show you some video from yesterday here. There was an electrical fire here. We are told on the 10th floor. Digging deeper into that, we're learning that the electrical fire 10th floor was a utility box in the stairwell. Somehow got wet, got some moisture on it, and then the fire started. It was very smoky, very smoky fire that started to go up to uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now, firefighters got here and they investigated the uh, elevators. The one was working, but you're talking about seniors, so a lot of the seniors had to be escorted down the stairs, which is the right thing to do in a fire. But if you have trouble walking, then some people, the fire department had to make sure elevators were safe uh, to bring some people down by elevator who were in a wheelchair. They're still investigating. There is a electrical company here, uh, Colville Electric, out of East Point. The young man just went inside to continue working on this issue. Apparently no lights right now on the top floors uh, as they continue to work on the electrical fire. Here's the other deal. There was a chief going around then kind of looking through the building after most of the people were out. And that's when he discovered an 86-year-old woman in a stairwell. Now, we do have her name. We're trying to contact her family. Her daughter was here a short time ago. It's Linda's neighbor, and she believes that instead of kind of waiting in place, the smoke was getting pretty thick. She thinks she went to the stairwell, and she says, uh, the, the woman, her neighbor, has asthma and was overcome by that smoke. So that's what we're looking into now, just a tragic situation. She was found pretty much after the incident in that stairwell. We're going to continue to investigate. We're also asking the city, you know, is this place uh, safe right now for residents to go back in? Uh, we'll get those answers for you later on Local 4. Back to you. Okay, Sean, we'll stick with you for that. Thank you. Might take a while to get to Mackinac Island if you're planning a trip up there soon. The new owner of the Mackinac Island Ferry Company is asking to suspend its service for the rest of the summer and fall because of massive repair issues. The fleet apparently needs millions of dollars in repairs, leaving a lot of boats out of service. If it's approved by the city, Shuffler's Ferry Service will be the only option for trips to and from the island the rest of the season. And that means with 10 boats to take everybody there and back, it might take a little longer to catch that ferry ride. Well, it is shaping up to be a beautiful day out there, just like Ashley predicted. It's almost <laughs> like she does this for a living. Ashley, I'm almost surprised we don't see a ferry or a big barge out there right now. You can see the boat behind you a little bit there, the uh, cruise ship. If yeah, you will. Yeah, the Detroit Princess. Princess. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just kind of parked right there. But uh, beautiful day out there. Clouds have been thickening up, but overall temperature is really pleasant. I appreciate that, Priya. I you know, so you guys can call me Mrs. Wright. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Your husband already does that. Okay? He's like, no. <laughs> so here's a look at downtown Detroit, where we sit at 80 degrees right now 77 in Ann Arbor, 77 in Pontiac, 78 in Monroe. And we have very light and variable wind out there. As we look at visible satellite, you can see see how some of these puffy clouds have developed across southeastern Michigan. Now you go west of Novi and you're probably getting a little more sunshine, especially out towards Livingston County up into Lapeer and into the Thumb region, because as we zoom out, you'll notice that even off of Lake Michigan, more sunshine, the thicker cloud deck is down by St. Louis, Kansas City, and so down to the southwest. But we just have those puffier scattered clouds that have developed today. 82 forecasted highs will probably go up by maybe a couple degrees. We'll have that sunshine mixing with those clouds and then we'll be in the low 70s just after sunset with those temperatures sliding just a little bit more. Next three days. Tomorrow is the warmest day of the week by just a couple degrees. 84 degrees, so we'll call it a warm Wednesday and that puts us just above average. 81 Thursday only because we have a few more clouds mixing in that'll hinder that sun from warming us up into the mid 80s. And then by Friday, now we're looking at our best chance for some rain to roll through, maybe even a few embedded thunderstorms and we'll have 70s heading into the weekend. How long the rain chances stick around? We'll talk about that next.